In this question, we are given a quadratic number pattern. Quadratic, remember that the, when the second difference is constant. In question one, they say the first differences. So let's just quickly talk about what the first differences are. So if I have a sequence, let me just write this down. Now, if I go down one level, then this is going to be plus one, minus one, minus three, minus five. This row over here is called the first differences. It says determine a expression for the first differences. So what that means is um, try to work out the formula for that. So let's quickly go write this for ourselves. It's like a brand new pattern. And we want to work out the formula for this. Now what we should identify is that they are minusing 2 each, each time. Can you see that? Minus 2 minus 2, minus 2. So that is a linear pattern. Now the formula for a linear pattern is tn equals to an plus b. And so a is always the difference. So that's just going to be minus 2n plus b. And then to find b, there's many different ways. But one of the common ways is to just plug in a random point. So for example, this minus 3. So the minus 3 is the answer. And it's at position 1, 2, 3. It's at position number 3. So we put that over there, plus b. And then if you had to go ahead and solve b, you would find out that b is equal to 3. And so the formula for that one is going to be tn equals to minus 2n plus 3. Question 2 says calculate the first difference. Okay, so we know that the first difference is these numbers going down. So it's this one this one and this one. So it's these numbers. They say calculate the first difference number which will be found between term 35 and term 36 in the quadratic pattern. So eventually if this top sequence the quadratic had to carry on eventually you would get to term 35 and then there would be term 36 and there would be a number for the first differences that would be between them. And that is the number that we are trying to find. So that would be this that would be term 35 in the first differences. So we already have a formula for the first differences. So we can just say that Tn is equal to minus 2n plus 3, and we want the 35th one of those. And so we say minus 2 times 35 plus 3, and that's going to be negative 67. Then number 3 says determine an expression for the nth term of the quadratic. Now that's for four marks because remember to find a quadratic sequence it's quite a lengthy process but it's not difficult. So if we write this out again then we go down a level then if we go down to the second differences this will be minus 2, minus 2 and minus 2. Then remember what we normally do here. We circle these first three numbers and we make these three formulas 2a, 3a plus b, and then a plus b plus c. Okay, so now it's just a matter of solving that. Remember, this is how we always do our quadratics. And so we start with the first one down here, which says that 2a is equal to minus 2. Therefore, a would be equal to negative 1. So now what we do is we go up to the next level. So we can say 3a plus b equals to 1, but now a is already minus 1. And so that's minus 3 plus b equals to 1. And if you had to solve this, you would find that b is equal to 4. And then we can go up to the last level, which says that a plus b plus c is equal to minus 3. And so a is minus 1, b is 4, c is, oh, that's what we're looking for, and that's equal to minus 3. And what we'd find is that c is going to be equal to negative 6. And so therefore, oh, and remember that the general formula of a quadratic is tn equals to an squared plus bn plus c. So tn would then be equal to a, which we said was minus 1, b was 4, and c was minus 6.
but now you must always double check yourself to see that it works because sometimes you can make a small mistake. So what I like to do is I go to the very last term in the quadratic, which is this one, and I know that that is at position number one, two, three, four, and five. So it's at position five. So what I do is I plug five into this pattern. Like that, and then I go work it out and I get minus 11. So what that tells me is that we have done this correctly. Number four is a very interesting one. So it says explain why the sequence of numbers will never contain a positive term. So what you can do is you can think of this as a graph. What graph does this look like? Well, it looks like a parabola, right? Because that would be negative x squared plus 4n, I mean plus 4x minus 6. And it's definitely a parabola which is upside down because it's got that negative in front of the x squared. So it's a parabola that maybe does something like this or this, something like that. But if, if we can show why will the numbers never contain a positive term, it means that the y value, this part here, will never be positive. So it will be a graph that is somewhere underneath the x-axis, like that. It won't go above like this. So we'll show that that doesn't happen. So what we do is we'll go find the turning point of this over here. Now we know that to find the turning point, if you've done functions already, you would know that for a parabola, the turning point is always equal to negative b over 2a. And so that's going to be negative 4 over 2 times negative 1, which is going to give us 2. So that's the n value. So n is 2. That's not the answer. That's just the, that's just the position or the term where the maximum number occurs. So what we then do is to work out that maximum value, or we actually know what term 2 is already. Term 2 is minus 2. So they're telling us that the maximum number in this sequence is occurring at term number 2, and it has a value of minus 2. And so we can say that the maximum value is minus 2. And so therefore, um, the numbers will never contain a positive term.